Let's bring him in action in the Caribbean. And is this the Windsor brand machine in full swing? Well, we can speak now to brand expert Jonathan Goodbye, who joins us in the studio. Thanks very much indeed for joining us, Mr. Goodbye. I mean, there's an enormous appetite amongst the public for this kind of thing, to see what the princes, Prince William and Prince Harry, are up to. But in your book, is this part PR exercise as well? When it comes to branding royal families, yeah, it's not HRH, it's about CRH. What does that mean? It's about consistency, it's about relevancy, and of course it's about being the highness. It's a different type of a branding in terms of celebrity branding than the regular celebrity branding. Because if you're someone like Lewis Hamilton, for example, you're going to earn your status because of the hard work yeah. that you do. And so people admire that sort of idea. But when it comes to the raw family, it's a harder sell because you, you get to your place simply because of position. Yeah, so we're seeing, as you see, say, them doing something relevant. And uh, we saw pictures of Prince Harry earlier in the week um, doing charitable works in, in Lesotho. I mean, every now and again, though, their, their image does need a bit of buffing up then, doesn't it? I mean, this one's counter to some of the things they're doing, let's say, in their private life, um, in the nightclubs and the rest of it. Yeah. Well, the thing about this, it's not so bad from a spin point of view, because when it comes to relevancy... Relevancy, you can look at it from the point of view of what are they doing for the country and that sort of idea. And so you're going to get lots of uh, branding people who are going to be feeding in stuff to the press, which is saying, look at what he's doing, he's doing good work here, he's doing good work there. But also, there's a different way of looking at it, and that is he's an ordinary guy as well, albeit a very privileged ordinary guy. And so he's doing things, instead of borrowing dad's car, He's, he's borrowing things. RAF helicopters. Absolutely. He's, he's <laughs> to give his brother a lift. Um, and so stuff like that is quite interesting because what they've got to do is that goes back down to this relevancy sort of idea. They've got to keep on showing that he is a brand that is relevant not just for the internal market, which is going to be for us in the UK, but also for selling brand UK to the external market as well. Okay, so it has a, has a good effect from that point of view. But talking of, of brand Windsor, have they got a lot better at this? over recent years. I'm thinking back 20 or so years ago to the debacle that mm. was It's a Royal Knockout and mm. things like that. No, they've got much better at it now because I think that they've learned their lessons and they've been very, very harsh lessons to learn. And so what they've got now is that they've got a machine going. So what they're doing is that they're drip, 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 dripping information to us, press information, stories and stuff like that, that actually are building up a bigger picture of what's going to happen in many years to come. But every now and again they do go around shooting themselves in the foot, don't they? It wasn't too long ago that um, Prince Harry was dressing up for a, a fancy dress do in, let's say, rather inappropriate garb. Absolutely, more than inappropriate garb. Yeah, it was Nazi but uniform. Absolutely, yes. and this is a week for that sort of idea in the news. Uh, but uh, people make mistakes. People would have made mistakes in the press office there, and I'm sure that heads did roll for that one. I mean, does it work? Do you think, uh, I mean, people know what they're being shown now. They're pretty sophisticated consumers out, out there, aren't they? They know the way that celebrity works, and you draw the distinction here. Yeah. But do you think people accept that, that, you know, this has really been rather spoon-fed to the media? But we want to see what they're doing anyway. Anyway, as I said to well, start. Well, this is the thing, you see. You see, on one minute, the people say, don't spit spoon feed us. But on the other ha hand, they're obsessed with celebrity. We are living in a culture of celebrity. So whether it's going to be the raw celebrity or, dare I say it, you yourself as a celebrity. Uh -huh. That'll be see, the day. You see, <laughs> you see um, what people want to know, they're curious. They want to know how, if you wish, the other half lives. And I think this is a great time to brand royalty. Mm, but, I mean, do they actually need it? I mean, Prince William and Harry, they're enormously popular anyway, aren't they? Uh, it's a about, it's not about whether they need it. This is a, this is a, it's a common uh, okay. issue that brands have. And they say, why should we, for example, advertise? Forget about uh, branding the royal family for a second. Because if people already know who we are, why bother to advertise? It's because we've got to make sure that the message that they want to get across is the right message. And what is that message? It goes back to what I said before. It's a message of consistency, that whatever happens in the world, whether it be a credit crunch or this or that or whatever, there's always a raw family brand <coughs> Excuse me, that we can actually depend upon. And it's got to be about relevance, because depending on something only comes, it comes into fruition if we trust the thing in which we, uh, on which we depend upon. I'm just thinking, is there a danger of it, in a way, exciting appetites too soon in terms of the succession? Here we have... Prince William, everyone likes the young man, everyone yeah. feels an awful lot of sympathy for him, given yeah. what he's been through with his mother. But there's a generation in between. There is yeah. his father, who is yet to become king. He could be there for many, many years, given the longevity of the royal family. An exciting demand here, in a way, that yeah. may not be being fulfilled. Well, the thing is, is that every generation needs to have that message still 
explained to them. So you're talking about your. But it could assuming, be 30 or 40 years before Prince fine, William becomes a king. Long, this is a long, ongoing story. Uh, it always has been a long, ongoing story in terms of branding royal families. And each each opportunity there is to actually build another aspect of the story to show that they, these people are, are, after all, human, but they're also leaders. Is a great is a great opportunity. Can I just quote something to you, if I may? There, for example, uh, with the North Atlantic drug bust. Okay, yep. the North Atlantic drug bust over there. Uh, Commander Mark Newland said, and I quote: uh, "Like all members of the crew, Prince William made a personal contribution to the sex success of the operation." So what you might be thinking? Ah, because what that's actually showing us is that he's one of the people. Mm. Whereas a week before, another commander said, uh, "A natural." He said things like, uh, "William is a natural leader." That gives us the thing that hey, we've got somebody who's a natural leader. You see, so it's all it's drip, all drip, dripping. dripping. The, you've done your analysis, Jonathan. Goodbye. Thank you very much indeed. Always a for, pleasure for joining us and talking us through all that we've been seeing over recent weeks.